What is up everyone in the Ripple and XRP community? Happy Monday. It is the start of a new week as we creep towards the 4th of July. A lot to go over since our last video on Friday. You know Mr. Van Winkle takes the weekends off because he lives here in sunny Florida and he needs to enjoy himself. Anyways, let's take a look at the price before we do anything. Where is XRP? Currently sitting at 18 cents. It so barely wants to be 19 cents, but guess what? It isn't. Bitcoin sitting a shy under 9,400. Total market cap 267 billion. We are still seeing a very, very flat market. I still do believe there's going to be one more down before we start to see an up. Yes, my under 10 cent XRP prediction is still out there. This year, at some point, I'm ready. I hope you're ready. I will buy, buy, buy. That is right. Been saving up that cash to get my final lick in. While the prices are so low. Anyways, let's keep it moving. Let's jump into the news. A lot for you to see. A lot to go over. Up first, from Michael at Val 5 Links. Make sure you give him a follow. Google Trend reveals XRP interest is its highest in South Korea and Japan. Let's jump over to the article. It's from CryptoNews.net. An analytical Interactive map of cryptocurrencies interest around the world compiled by the blockchain center research team shows that interest for XRP is more concentrated in South Korea and Japan than any other country. South Korea kind of peaks my, my eyes a little bit, but we know about Japan. We know about SBI. We know what they are building. Japan does not surprise me one bit. We have some massive news coming to you a little bit later in this video about SBI and Japan going live with on-demand liquidity. It's coming sooner than you think. The map visualizes search interest for different coins by country with data sourced from Google Trends, a platform that normalizes search data to facilitate comparisons between terms. The map lists five countries where the interest for XRP interest is dominated and puts South Korea and Japan in the first and second positions. Other countries in order of their interest for XRP include Ireland, Slovenia, and Australia. Two more countries that kind of pop out to me that we haven't heard much from, Ireland and Slovenia. The analytical map also confirmed that above any other altcoin in the cryptocurrency market, XRP possesses the highest interest in Japan and South Korea. In Japan, XRP poses a percentage interest of 32%, while Ethereum, the runner-up, recorded 26%. South Korea displayed similar interest ranking as XRP Commerce, 39%, and Ethereum only grew up 34%. So, without continuing to read the rest of this article, I think you get what they're saying. XRP is starting to peak the interest of South Koreans and Japanese folks. Why is this big? Because in 2017, South Korea led the bull charge for XRP. If you remember, the price difference from the South Korea market to the United States market, there was a massive gap. I believe it was around 70 to 80 cents, could have even hit a dollar in that gap. So it is good to see that trends from 2017 are coming back. And Japan, we all know what's going on over there with SBI. We know how much the Japanese love XRP. And we also have data. We have news that SBI Japan is going live at some point this year. And there's only five months left in the year with XRP. Do I expect a large rollout? Absolutely not. We know how XRP works. There are no large rollouts. They test, they test, they test, they test. They come mainstream with a very small percentage at first before they start ramping up. But the important thing to take away from all of this, South Korea, who led the charge in 2017 for XRP buyage and who led the charge for the bull run, for the bull market, is starting to we are starting to see peaked in interest again in xrp searches via google trends and japan and we know japan is about to go live with on demand liquidity let's keep it moving ripple meets with the central bank of cambodia sbi asia to implement on demand liquidity 
Key takeaways from the article, SBI Ripple Asia will complete the pilot phase for on-demand liquidity and officially go into production with on-demand liquidity this year. Yes, that means they will go into production using XRP this year. Ripple also met with the Central Bank of Cambodia to discuss alternatives to SWIFT. Everyone is looking for an alternative to SWIFT and that exactly is what XRP and Ripple are doing. You can also throw R3 in there with the quarter settler. Let's just have a, a little read here. SBI Ripple Asia officially to launch for on-demand liquidity this year. In a recent interview with Tony Edwards, known as YouTuber as Thinking Crypto, everyone give him a follow. Trademan describes how SBI Ripple Asia is success successfully testing the on-demand liquidity payment solution and is very pleased with the results. Now, most of you are probably going to say, but SBI said they were going to go live two years ago. Well, technically, they never really said that. There is a lot of discussion in the community about this. But guess what? We heard firsthand from this interview that, yes, SBI Ripple Asia has been testing, and, yes, they are going live this year. People, this is exciting. On-demand liquidity is a solution that changes the fundamental layers of the banking system and how money is moved, and that technology is super exciting. It's just rolling out now for SBI Ripple Asia. We have had a limited trial and pilot projects going on right now with various companies in our territories, and they're going great. Already at the end of last year, the association announced its intentions to take up 50% of Ripple's total network volume as soon as the technical infrastructure for the use of on-demand liquidity is available. 50% people. This is no number to play around with. I expect that probably later this year and into next year, things are going to move into a widespread production. And I expect remittance companies that were restricted in growth because of pre-funding requirements to have a lot more flexibility. Currently, all banks still use RippleNet to process transactions, but all partner banks of SBI Remit and SBI Ripple Asia are scheduled to migrate to Ripple's new system on-demand liquidity before the end of the year. SBI Remit works with Ripple's partner MoneyGram and currently processes transfers to in over 196 countries with over 350,000 locations. Marcus Treacher Ripple's Senior Vice President of Customer Success revealed last week that Ripple's plan to complete its global expansion to 192 countries by the end of 2021. Absolutely massive news. Some of the biggest news we have heard. You can put this on top with Pay ID, people. This is huge. Ripple is looking to get into 196 countries with over 350,000 locations with on demand liquidity. And that rollout is starting this year and going into next year where they want to wrap it up. Tremendous. Then we got Ripple meets Central Bank of Cambodia. Not going to read too much into this, but here are the details. Central Bank of Cambodia wants an alternative to SWIFT. They are meeting with Ripple to get onto RippleNet. It's going to happen. People are over SWIFT. They are sick and tired of it. Ripple is growing like a three-headed monster that we have never seen before. Let's keep it moving. From the Cryptic Poet at One Cryptic Poet, here's the interview we were just talking about with Thinking Crypto. Thinking Crypto, excuse me. SBI is literally Ripple's biggest fan. I didn't say it. Adam Trademan did it, who is the CEO of Ripple Asia. I'm going to play this for you. It's two minutes and 20 seconds. Have a listen. You are going to be blown away. Here we go. SBI is, is literally Ripple's biggest fan. Like, you know, Kitao san yeah. is trying to make XRP and Ripple successful everywhere. Let me give an example that'll seem crazy to you, but it's actually true. So there's going to be uh, the next World's Fair. Can you imagine they still have these things? World's Fair is going to be in Osaka in like 2025, something like that, or whatever. Wow, they yeah. still have those? Wow. Okay. And, yeah, I know, right? That's what I said, right? <laughs> it's going, if, if he gets his way, the CEO of SBI, it's going to be, if you go there and you want to buy anything from a, a you know, Coca-Cola to a hamburger, it's going to take XRP. It's going to remain wow. XRP. That's what we're working towards. Wow. Okay? That's just one little example, right? Sure. But more important to that is replacement for international wire transfers in SWIFT, mm -hmm. right? So I'm meeting all the time with these, like, bankers, central bankers. I met with the head of the central bank from Cambodia last year in December. Uh, and, you know, 
they're looking for alternatives to technologies like SWIFT because they want to get out from under the thumb of the U.S. Department of Treasury, which sort of runs the global banking network. Right. I mean, it's Swift is a Belgian company by definition, but yeah, you know, it's uh, you know, there's a lot of U.S. influence in, in a lot of things in banking, right? Yeah. And so, you know, technologies like that that are legal, uh, like Ripple's Tech, are you know really attractive to to a, a multitude of parties. It's not just about things like that. It's mainly about lower cost, better customer experience, lower risk, and just faster, right? The kind of things that people like you and I care about, right? That's what ultimately we're doing with SVI Ripple Asia is we're enabling like remittance companies and PSPs to send money or individuals to send money back to their families and stuff like that and just have it go faster and cheaper, right? And the fact that you use Ripple under the hood, they don't need to necessarily know that. Just like you don't know what happens when you swipe your credit card, you know, in France, right? And it charges your bank in America. Who the hell cares what happens under the hood? It better just work. It does. Same thing here with this company, right? And so... Um, Ripple Asia's business has been growing because Asia happens to be just a lot more progressive when it comes to, you know, all sorts of payment rails and things of that sort. So um, the, the, the use cases that make the most sense right now are uh, remittances. So, like I said, folks sending. All right, listen, Nate, you had it. The CEO of SBI Ripple Asia has told you that they are going live this year and into next year. What does that tell me? It tells me that there is a massive rollout coming. They've been testing for the past two, three, four years. And as he said, they are aiming on-demand liquidity uses at remittness and payment-to-payment -payment providers. Why? Because banks will be the last to adopt. You need to get the remittance market up and running to kind of show the world what XRP can do. What did he also say that was important here? Me and you, the customer, we don't need to know that on-demand liquidity is being used in the background. This is not for us. This is for this payment, these payment provider companies. This is for the remittance companies to be able to send money, not even to send money, to zip money around the world so fast, so quick, and so cheap that it's going to benefit us. Listen, you don't know how an email is sent, right? You send an email, you type an email address, and you don't know what's going on in the background. Do you need to know? Do you need to know every step of the way what's going on with that email? Absolutely not. You care about one thing, that your email gets there safe and securely. That's going to be the same thing with XRP. We don't need to know what's going on in the background. We don't need to know if XRP is being used. All we care about, how long is it going to take for my money to get there? How much is it going to cost me? That's it. End of story, people. Let's keep going. From the Wrath Economist, he put together a nice little thread here. I want everyone to have a listen. At the 47 minute mark of Christina's Corner interviews of Ripple's Joel Katz, he says three significant things in rapid succession before closing. One, he dismisses the idea that Ripple's escrow is spoken for as conspiracy theories. So boom, right then and there, Ripple escrow is not spoken for. He put a he just put a nail in the coffin here. The XRP that Ripple has tied up in escrow is their XRP. It is not all pre-allocated like people have been saying and you have been hearing. No, absolutely not. Listen, there aren't central bankers. There aren't governments around the world that have bought up this XRP and Ripple is just holding it for them until it's time to get released. No, it is not working like that. Joel Katz put an end to this. He said it's a conspiracy theory and that is not how it works so if you're sitting there ho thinking or hoping that when ripple does their ipo and you that you're gonna find out where all this xrp has gone you're gonna come to find out that it hasn't gone anywhere because it hasn't been pre-allocated that has always been a theory and a theory has finally been put to rest Thank you, David. Number two, Joel Katz says Ripple is working on regional clearing partners, which are banks that have RippleNet connectors to numerous other banks in that region. So you can sign up with RippleNet as an institution and get clearing into any other region. Absolutely massive people. And number three, Ripple is also looking into offering things like loans or DeFi services to institutional partners. One of the unique things that Ripple has is that a software transaction flown to all these financial institutions can offer it immediately. 
And then we're going to give a big shout out to James Rule XRP. Follow him at Rule XRP for capturing this video and throwing it up there. And then a couple of side notes. A little surprise at the escrow attention. I take the Joel Katz, I take Joel Katz at his word. He did not reserve comment as he does when limited by NDAs. He suddenly dismissed it in a conspiracy theory. Why ignore him, but trust what is said elsewhere. Exactly. If David can't answer something, as you're going to see in this little short clip I'm about to play for you, he will say he cannot speak about it because of NDAs. But if David can't answer something because it is either false or as he says himself, it is a conspiracy theory. He will talk about it. And that is exactly what he did with the escrow. He shot it down. He said, no, sorry. It's a conspiracy theory from people on YouTube. La -di -di -da. You're going to hear it for yourselves. But when he was talked to, when he was asked about, say, WhatsApp and, and Ripple's possible connection into WhatsApp with on-demand liquidity and Facebook, he said, I am not allowed to talk about this. I am under NDAs. He said the same thing for PolySign. Let's have a listen. I'm only going to play you about three minutes of this and make up your mind for yourself. There we go. Hey guys, well, the, this. Oh, we have some questions. Wait a minute. Can you guys come back? Come back to me. We have some questions. Give me a moment here. I'm going to go in and grab some questions. David, if you don't mind sticking around for a couple, is that okay? Sure. All right, let's do it. What do we got? Um, okay. Okay, here, here's some questions. All right. Are current escrow S, uh, XRP held for central banks to utilize in the current financial crisis as per the new inclusion uh, to the CARES Act? You know, there's a lot of conspiracy theories and speculation on Twitter that people just sort of make things up out of whole cloth. Um, the word hopium is sometimes used to describe this idea that like you'll, you, you see people will see ripple or they'll see XRP or they'll see some other cryptocurrency and everything going on in the news. Um, there are certainly big things going on that we have not, that we, you know, that we don't always announce, but, uh, that those conspiracy theories don't have any grounding. Totally fair. Um, where do you see ripple net in five years? Uh, I, I kind of see a, a growth of the network to the point where so many of the payments that institutions want to make can be made on RippleNet that it's their first stop. So they want to make a payment, they're going to look to RippleNet for some way to settle it. One of the things that we've been working on is regional clearing partners, which are banks that have RippleNet connections to numerous other banks in that region. So we can, uh, so you can sign up with, with RippleNet as an institution and get clearing into an entire region. We're also looking into offering other services through RippleNet, things like loans or um, maybe even as D if DeFi grows, maybe offering DeFi services to institutional uh, to institutional partners. One of the unique things that Ripple has is we have our software in the like transaction flow of all of these financial institutions and banks. So we can uh, develop some new, some new product or services or even something that comes from the DeFi space and we can offer it like immediately right into the transaction flow of those institutions. So using RippleNet as a platform to offer whatever new products and services emerge either from Ripple or from other people in the blockchain space, um, I think you're going to see more of that. Uh, you're a popular man. Um, we've had many questions for a lot of our guests, but we have more for you in Ripple than, than ever before. Um, I'll, I'll do a couple more, if you don't mind. What's happening with uh, PolySign? You know, unfortunately, I'm not really. That's one of the things where I'm under a non-disclosure agreement. I'm super excited about what we're doing at PolySign. We, we're, we're officially an institutional custody uh, company, but we're trying to do some very, very interesting things that I... I I, I just have to, I have to stop. I, I can't wait until the, you know, pay it was until yesterday. And I was always annoyed when there was some, an answer I wanted to give about pay ID and I couldn't. And now I have to do the same thing with pause. It's like, I want to tell you things I can't. I, I got to stop there. Sorry. We'll, yeah, we'll so go, there we'll, are journalists here. Yeah. And, and, and <laughs> right. we'll go off camera. You can tell me. Um, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fair. Um, and also, uh, will WhatsApp launch pay ID and XRP uh, in Brazil? Um, I can't, I can't uh, announce any partnerships or anything like that, uh, that that are not announced. So I can, I can read you the list of announced partners, but I'm, I can't. Uh, I, I, you're never going to get an announcement like that from me because someone asked me a question. No problem. 
Um, one, one last question. Um, have you considered the prowling in the, the mods of the Ripple network uh, as it grows in size? All right, we're going to stop the video there. That last question, David was actually confused about. He wasn't sure what they meant. No need to play a few, but you heard it from David. Listen, he called the pre-allocation theories going around on Twitter. <laughs> Excuse me. He called the pre-allocation theories going around on Twitter conspiracy theories. <laughs> oh, excuse me. So we called those conspiracy theories. He also said when there is something that he can't talk about, like PolySign, he mentions the fact that he's under an NDA. Talking about Brazil, he was asked if WhatsApp will use PayID. He said he will not announce Partnerships. So what do I think here? I'll tell you what I think from the three things that David said. Pre-allocation theory? No. There is no pre-allocation theory. It's squashed. It's over. No more about it. Number two, PolySign. This year. PolySign will be released or announced this year. And number three, is Facebook and WhatsApp using PayID in Brazil? 50-50 on it. Do I think that there is a some kind of partnership going on between Facebook and Ripple? I do. I absolutely do. The question is to me, is it a direct partnership or is it going through MoneyGram? But yes, there is 100% something going on. You can tell by the way David kind of st t uh, stepped around it, tiptoed around it. And then he said he was not allowed to announce partnerships. I believe... If nothing was going on, he would have put an end to it right then and there. No, that has nothing to do with us, like he has done in the past. But he said he will not make announcements. And he also said there's a lot, there are a lot bigger things going on that the company has not announced yet. So something to look forward to, something to uh, keep our eyes on. But I do believe something between Facebook and Ripple is going on. And then, from XRP Stewart, that's Stewart XRP. This is from the video as well. RippleNet in five years, David said the growth of the network to support with so many of the payments that institutions want to make can be made on RippleNet. That is their first stop. Certainly big things going on that we have not and don't always announce. Absolutely huge. Ripple, listen, Ripple doesn't announce everything and, and nor do they have to announce everything. They're a private company. But one thing we do know, PayID was a massive announcement and they are building like no other. What we do not know going on behind the scenes, I can only imagine, people. All we can do is hold. Don't worry about the price. Price is currently a distraction. The network's getting built out. Adoption is coming. Look at PayID. It launched of 100 million customers. Absolutely massive. And yes, PayID is involved with Codius. Codius is not dead. PayID also uses XRP and the ILP. That's his bloodline, XRP. PayID said it, not me. So much going on, everyone. Listen, I gotta get ready for work. I want you to enjoy your Monday. I want you to wash your damn hands. Ripple Van Winkle is out.